to take a look at our class worksheet that we had to do from lesson 24. Now we're going to start by going over question number one. Warming an ice melt. The average depth of the Hudson Bay is 305 feet. Climatologists were interested in seeing if the effects of warming an ice melt were affecting the water level. 55 measurements over a period of weeks yielded a sample of 306.2 feet. Population variance is known to be 3.57. Can it be concluded at the 0.05 level of significance, that is to say alpha is 0 0.05, that the average depth is increased? Use hypothesis testing to draw your conclusion. First thing I want to do is take a little step back in time and just mention variance. We, we haven't talked much about it this year, but variance is um, to find the standard deviation, you take the square root of the variance, okay? So um, in this case, they tell you the variance. You have to know that the standard deviation is the square root of that, um, which numerically would be the square root of 3.57, which is 1.8894. But in the um, calculator, you can just enter square root of 3.57. Okay, so the most important thing, these kind of questions, I think you can overthink these kind of questions. That's what I think. And I think it's really important that you establish whatever the null is and the alternative, uh, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Now, remember, you're going to test the alternative hypothesis. You do not test the null hypothesis, okay? So, um, the first thing I said is that what, the, what they're looking to conclude here is that the effects of warming in the ice melt made the depth increase. So my null is that the average depth is greater than or equal to 306.2 feet deep, okay? And if that's the, the null, then the alternative is that it's actually less than 306.2. And then it's just a question of what we input into the calculator and understanding how to do this. Now, um, we're going to test the data. So we're going to go to stat, and then test, which is the third column over, and then choose the first test, which is the Z test. And what we're really going to do is see, hey, you know, what is the probability of this happening? And if the probability is um, light, if it's likely that this is happening, then, then it is, and if it's not, it's not. So the calculator will tell us that. Um, once I get to the z-test mode, and I want to make sure in this particular problem I'm using statistics. In the next problem, excuse me, I'll show you data. But in this problem, it's statistics. So across the top there, it says data or statistics. Make sure you're in statistics is the mode you choose. Okay, so um, the hypothesis, if you will, the mu that we're talking about for the null set, the mean of the null set, is 306.2 because that's what they think it should be. Now, how do I know the 306.2 goes there? And Well, couldn't it also be the regular mean? Look, there's a reason why they call it the mean sub-zero, if you will, or the mean of the null hypothesis. So you have to look at the number that you're using in the null hypothesis. In this case, it's 306.2. Then we're gonna to go to the standard deviation, which we said was the square root of 3.57. Then we go to the mean they mentioned in the problem, which is 305, and then the n in the problem, which is they tested it 55 times, so it's 55. And as far as the test goes, you choose the test that matches the alternative hypothesis. That is to say, you choose less than, and you just calculate it. I usually like to go to the draw button so I can see the graph at the same time, but you can do calculate, and in this case, it'll tell you that p is zero. So remember the saying, if P is low, the null must go. So therefore, you reject the null hypothesis. And it is not the case that the average depth has uh, increased to greater than or equal to 306.2. Okay. So now we go to um, the second problem. And in the second problem, what we're going to do is we're going to input all of this data into L1 before we start. So the first thing we do is we put all of this data into L1. Now, the cool thing about that is 
it makes what we're going to enter less because once the data is in, the calculator will figure certain things out. Um, this problem is all about whether the average cost of men's shoes is less than $80. That's what the researcher claims. So that'll be the null hypothesis, that if the cost is less than or equal to $80, the alternative is its cost is greater than $80. Again, I go stat, test, z-test. In this case, the average is 80 in the problem, in the, in the um, hypotheses, and it's also the standard deviation is 19.2. So I plug in that for the hypothesis purposes, the number we're looking for is 80. This is 19.2, and here's the important thing. The alternative hypothesis is greater than, so I make sure I choose the greater than graph. And when I punch it in, I come up with P equals 0 0.9409. P is high, the null must fly. So therefore, yes, the cost generally is less than or equal to $80. Now, what can get a little consuming is these P values, and they're a little offsetting, but just keep relating them back to H, uh, the null and the alternative, and um, P is high, null must fly.